All right, hey guys, let me get my uh, problems up here. We're going to be working on uh, hypothesis testing for variances. Yeah, minimize this. Yeah, so we've been talking about hypothesis testing for variances. We've worked on a bunch of other stuff, and I just want to do some practice problems. I'm going to do two today, one in this video, and then I'll probably just record another video, stop this and record another one. Um, and the stuff you're going to need, if you want to be following along, is a chi-squared table. Um, <clears throat> for this one, I mean, we're going to need an F table for the next one. So we'll stick with the chi-squared for now. I know this because I know which problem we're doing. You know this because, well, you'll find out when we're reading the question. Okay, without further ado, this is from Chapter 11 of Anderson, 11E, Anderson et al., 11E. Um, an automotive part must be machined to close tolerances to be acceptable to customers. Production specifications call for a maximum variance in the length of the parts of 0 0.0004. Four ten thousandths. Suppose the sample variance for 30 parts turns out to be S squared equals 5 ten thousandths. Use alpha equals 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 5 percent significance level to test whether the population variance specification is being violated. Okay, so we want to test whether this is being violated. Um, and if it's not being violated, then what does it look like? Well, then under the null, we're going to assume it's not being violated to see if we can prove that it is. Under the null, the population variance are at most, right, maximum variance, they're no greater than, or they're less than or equal to, those are all the same thing, 0 0.0004. My handwriting's getting a little better on this thing. Oh, I need to apologize in advance. I have a cough drop. My daughter has a cold. My son has a cold. I kind of have a cold, so I have a cough drop, and I apologize if it clicks. Okay, that's our nil. Uh, under the alternative, we, we are going to conclude... So if we reject the null, we'll conclude that actually sigma squared is greater than 0 0.0004. It's too big. The variance is too high. Okay, that's step one. Pretty straightforward. That's step one. Step two is to choose a level of alpha, as we've been doing all along. If this is news to you, then you are watching this video out of order, and you should go way back and watch some earlier hypothesis testing videos. Step two is choose the level of significance. Done. Step three is to choose a test statistic. So we have one population variance that we care about. We have one sample. So you can look at it either way. We have one population variance. And our test statistic for variances um, or standard deviations. We use this for both, but you need to convert it to a variance. looks like this. Chi squared equals n minus 1 times s squared over... The variance under the null, sigma squared 0. And under the null, this whole thing, this test statistic is distributed chi squared with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. If you go back and watch the previous video, you can learn all about the chi squared curve and practice using the table. We're going to use it today for this one as well. Okay, so that's our test statistic. For step 4, we need to compute this. So what do we need? Well, we need n, we need s squared, and we need sigma squared under the null. So what's our sample? Uh, look back in the question. We had 30 parts, so n is 30. S squared uh, right here gives us 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.005, 0. 0. 0.005. And under the null, where do we get this? The same place we've been getting our null assumptions this whole time. It comes out of our null hypothesis. Right? It's always on the right side. It's our assumption about the population um, parameter. And that's the... the bulk of hypothesis testing. We make an assumption about the population parameter like this and then we make use of it to see if our sample is, if that's a reasonable assumption given our sample. Okay, so now that we have all this stuff we can calculate. Let me switch colors. I don't like monochromatic stuff that much. We'll use complementary colors. Here we go. So, plugging this stuff in, you get 30 minus 1 is 29 and S squared is that's a multiplication, 0 0.0005, all over 0 0.0004, and that's going to be 36.25. That should look really big if you've been uh, following along with Z statistics and T statistics and stuff. Chi squareds, they, they get pretty big sometimes. So whereas uh, with a Z statistic or a T statistic, this kind of level would make you think you did it wrong. In this case, that's that's just fine. Um, Chi-squared numbers are sometimes kind of big relative to those other ones. Okay, under the null, we have 29 degrees of freedom. And that's step four. Last but not least, step five is to evaluate this test statistic. 
So what do we do? Well, we draw the curve, right? Uh, that's a terrible line. Let me try this again. I need a I need a ruler for my pad here because it gets ugly sometimes. I apologize. Okay, so eh, that's as horizontal and vertical as I'm gonna get it. That's fine. Chi squared. It's always positive, and you're gonna get something that looks kind of like this. That's certainly good enough to let me know that you know what you're doing. And we label the curve so we can indicate we know what we're talking about. That's what we're drawing. Our test statistic is, I don't know, somewhere here-ish, I guess. 36.25 is what we have. Now I'm going to use a p-value approach because that's the one I always like. Um, and what we need to know then is we also need to know what the direct, what our test is. If we go back up here, you see we have a upper tail test. That's what that, a, a large variance or large chi-square is going to lead to rejection. Um, and so that's what we want to know then for our upper tail test is just what is the size of this area. Okay. How do we find this? Well, we'll use a chi-squared table. I have mine right here. Maybe I can... So 36.25 is our test statistic. And we're looking at the 29 degree of freedom chi-squared curve. So we are looking on a chi-squared distribution. We're going to follow this uh, column down to 29. You can see this is the row we're using here. Okay, now we got to scroll up to the top. Well, not just yet. What we want to find is we want to find the two values of this that rest on either side. You can see here we have 19.768 and 39.087. So we can label those here if we want. Uh, let me use let me use a different color. Let's use a nice, there we go. So we have 19 over here, and on the other side, or that's 19.8, and then on the other side we have 39.1. Now if we scroll up, we can see that up. Oh, 39.1 has 10% in the right tail, in the upper tail. That's what this gives you, the area in the upper tail. And then 19.8 has 90% in the upper tail. What that means is this area, the blue area here to the right, that's 0 .0, or 0 0.90. And then if I'll uh, make it what, green maybe, the green area here is 0 0.10. So, we want to put bounds on our red area, our maroon area that's hidden under there. We can say that 0 0.10 is less than our p-value, which is less than 0 0.90. It's upper tail test, so we don't have to double anything. Um, but that's a pretty big level of uncertainty. In any case, we've put bounds on our p-value, and that's plenty fine for our purposes. What do we conclude? Well, 0 0.05 is clearly less than our p-value, and that was our alpha that we chose. That's, that's an alpha that we chose way back up in uh, in step two. Right. Oh, I screwed that up. I apologize. So this should just say 0 0.05. Let me erase. Let me uh, scratch that. Ha, ha, ha. 0 0.05. See, I make mistakes a lot of the time. In any case, we chose a 5% alpha. I got a little overzealous with my zeros. You guys get the idea. In any case, even if we had had that alpha in both cases, because our p-value is greater than our alpha, we reached the following conclusion. We fail to reject the null. So we know from our sample that our sample variance was higher than the... Uh, than the standard set, right? That was what the question was asking us about. We know that the, the sample variance was higher than the product specifications, but not so high that we can conclude that in the population that that's true, um, that the population variance is too high. It turns out that there's a pretty good chance that you might get random, you might just randomly choose some high variance um, parts that would give you this kind of a sample variance. So that's how you solve this sort of problem. Uh, Hope you enjoyed that, and uh, next I'll be looking at two variances. Thank you, guys.